Well, good afternoon, everyone. I know that this is going to be recorded, and while I don't see anyone in our part in our participant group yet, I think it might be a good idea to go ahead and get started. And, and um, hoping that a lot of you are coming to this as, at the recording time. I know it's the middle of the day. Um, many of our teachers and administrators are hard at work in their classrooms at their school sites, and that there are lots of options available with this wonderful uh, forum. So with that, um, I'd like to begin, first of all, by thanking our sponsors and supporters. I'm fairly new to global this global leadership group and global education group. Um, and now that I feel like I'm swimming in the, the deep end, um, I'm very happy to be um, to be where we are. Um, it's an exciting time for global education, not only in California, but across the nation and worldwide. Well, it looks to me like um, I am the only one in this in this uh, session right now. Um, I am based at San Diego, uh, San Diego State University in Cal San Diego, California, um, but I am actually uh, presenting from the beautiful Aptos, California, um, after being up in the Bay Area for our Global Leadership Summit, uh, which we had yesterday at Edmodo. Um, so let's get on with with this presentation. Uh, with in light of this being Global Leadership Week, um, I thought it would be great when I was asked to make a presentation to um, to share about teacher leadership. And uh, also let the let you know a little bit more about our uh, California subject matter project and the California International Studies project. So um, I'm Emily Shell, and I am the the executive director of the California International Studies project, which is uh, based at San Diego State University. And you've got my email address there, so please, and I'll show it at the very end of this presentation, but please get in touch with me, contact me if you hear something today or see something or have some ideas or want to collaborate, um, because this is an exciting, exciting venture that we're on in building, building capacity for global education in pre-kindergarten through 12th grade classrooms across the state of California. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the California Subject Matter Project, um, we do have in the state of California, um, with the leadership of the University of California Office of the President, um, based on uh, funding that comes from the federal government and matched with state funds uh, through legislation, we've got nine subject matter projects that are all based in one or more disciplines. The California International Studies Project is one of those nine subject matter projects, and we're unique in that we're not we're, we're standards based, but we're not based in any one set of standards, uh, unlike the other subject matter projects. Um, but we believe in uh, developing teacher learning through their disciplines, through their subject matters, and uh, we've got this organization across the state with a statewide office based at one university and then sites across the state um, that support that work coming out of the statewide office. So the goal for the California Subject Matter Project and the California International Studies Project are, of course, aligned. We support high quality professional development of, of pre-kindergarten through 12th grade teachers. Our, our Mandate is to support standards and to help teachers um, understand what the standards are in the disciplines in which they teach while we are addressing the needs of that English language learner population, which we have um, extensively throughout the state. Through disciplinary content knowledge and pedagogy, we're also helping teachers to understand what disciplinary literacy means so that we can build literacy across the disciplines for all of our students. Um, and of course, we attend to uh, the needs to have our students stay on track for college, career, and civic participation. What's unique about our subject matter projects is that we are based on university campuses and so our partners, our partnership with 
professors and innovators and people working in higher education, um, we we work very hard to bridge that PK-12 audience with colleges and university faculty. Um, and we have some, some dynamic programs that, that result. Um, and then teacher leadership, which is the focus of today's session. Teacher leadership is one of the standards of all of our California subject matter projects. If you want to learn more about the California Subject Matter Projects, I encourage you to go to our website, and you can just Google CSMP and um, click on any of these icons on the bottom to see what programs we have available in the arts, in world language, in writing, or science, math, um, etc. And um, you can see that with that tagline there, uh, our mission is to create sustainable teacher learning communities throughout the state of California. So with um, our focus on teacher leadership across the different subject matter projects, and we just presented this statewide at an Education Excellence Summit in Sacramento in January, um, we do focus on teachers. We see teachers as our greatest asset. Um, we know that when we look at so much reform, so many, so many shifts and changes going on in education, um, that, that the power really rests and the potential really rests in the teacher. And so we, we value teachers uh, for all that they do and do what we can to support them to provide leadership in their classrooms, at their school sites, in their districts, in their counties, and statewide. But we also recognize that leadership is not a canned product or a canned um, program. And so we, we bring and we develop teacher leadership in the context of where those teachers are and recognize that uh, they have an expertise in a certain content area and we want that teacher leadership to be, yeah, to be um, developed within that proper context and content. Continu continuous improvement for teacher and student learning is, is our goal. We recognize, again, that this is not a, a pin that you get because you went through a summer program or, um, you know, that, that teacher leadership requires constant attention and continuous dialogue and observation and design and um, there are lots of inputs that, that, need, that come with the many changes that our teachers face on a regular basis. So throughout our programs, we work very hard to identify teachers as leaders, to develop and support them, and then to sustain that leadership capacity, whether, um, whether that, again, is at a school site or it's working in a, in a larger capacity. So we, we, we consider ourselves teachers and learners and leaders, and that's what we work to support in our different projects across the state. Okay, so um, let's focus on the California International Studies Project. This is Global Leadership Week, and we're all about global ed, and that's what our subject matter project does. We, this is our, our team um, at San Diego. They came to San Diego State, and um, we have a mission statement. So you can read that there on your on your screen. Uh, we do work. We work very hard to come up with this mission statement to really define who we are and what we do for educators and for the community in our state of California. Uh, we work very hard to not just support teachers, but to inspire them, to to capture those who are who are already inspired and support them to develop global competence and active citizenship in in all students, um, so that they are prepared for the the needs of this 21st century. The California International Studies Project has six sites, university-based sites throughout the state. You can see our far reach in the north is at Sonoma State University, um, moving down through San Joaquin, the Bay Area. We have a partnership with World Savvy. They do operate our site in the, in the Bay Area. Um, Dominguez Hills in the Los Angeles, Long Beach region, and then Fullerton, uh, CSU Fullerton meets the needs of not only the teachers in Orange County, but moving east into the Inland Empire region. And then, of course, San Diego State reaching as far down into, uh, right, right down to the border, uh, serving Imperial County as well as San Diego County. 
So let's talk about teacher leadership. Um, teacher leadership starts with our site directors. So at each of those six sites that uh, we just looked at on that map, we have um, a site director who comes from the classroom, who is a, who remains a teacher, but works to develop programs to promote global education um, by working with teachers. And so we can see here some examples of teacher of our site directors um, who who work on a regular basis with teachers, making presentations like we see Connie DeCapit up in the upper left hand corner that was just last Saturday. She was working with some middle school and high school teachers in Riverside to promote a global leadership uh, course that's been developed in that district. Um, and that happened because she has been a great coach and mentor for some of the teachers in that region. Um, so we see ourselves as site directors, as not just providing programs or promoting programs, but continuing in our roles as teachers, mentors, getting in the classroom and coaching teachers as we follow up with programs, or teachers we work with who say, can you just come observe me do a lesson and give me some feedback, or can you give me your, tell me what you're seeing as far as my English learners really uh, developing uh, in this area of global competence. Um, so we, we kind of tailor our, our work to meet those needs of the, of the teachers. Um, we work in collaboration. We can't do this on our own. We need to model what we're promoting as a global competence. And um, so we collaborate with each other and with our school partners, district administrators, community members. Um, our site directors are very innovative. They come up with ideas that, uh, that are unique and different and not perhaps your traditional professional development um, because that's what we have to do in global ed and that's what we're promoting as a global competence as well. Um, our teacher leaders do lots of communication with among teachers, among community, um, policy makers, funders. Uh, we're still trying to get the word out and really um, kind of just get people on board when, when we talk about global education. Um, so lots of observation, lots of cheerleading. Um, you can see in these photos, we have Connie up in the upper left-hand corner presenting at a, at a Saturday workshop with teachers. And then moving over to the right, we've got uh, our team members um, collaborating on a strategic plan for our project and determining um, what our strategic goals are as we, as we build capacity for global ed in California. In the bottom left-hand corner, you see one of our site directors who just retired in December after 22 years of being the site director at the Sonoma site and building global competence through, um, through her work in that region. And then the bottom right-hand corner, our site director, Gary Kresh, at the ISTEP um, site in San Diego, working with one of our teacher leaders. Um, he's present at our statewide California Council for the Social Studies Conference. Um, and that's in our booth where we uh, engage teachers in conversations about global competence and, and kind of took polls to find out what they're doing in the classroom and what support they need um, through, our, through our network. Um, teacher, so it starts with the site directors, but of course teach, our goal is to develop teacher leadership in those teachers in the classroom. The goal is not to get them to move out of the classroom, but to move up within the classroom or within their work at their school site or in their, in their school district. Um, so through our programs, which can be a, you know, a two-week summer institute or a one-day workshop or a, you know, a three-day program, um, or a program that, that meets on Saturdays throughout the school year. Um, but through all of our programs, we, we make sure that there's active participation and that we are engaging teachers in the kinds of activities that we, um, that we want to see them engaging their students in in the classroom. So lots of problem solving, collaboration, innovation, being creative, um, lots of sharing constantly. Um, and we work with these teachers through our programs to develop better resources, better instructional design, better assessments, better ways to differentiate um, so that they can meet those, those goals of developing global competence in their students. Um, and in that process, we see, we, we promote lots of community building. Um, we have 40, so 
for example, in San Diego with that with the site there, we have 43 school districts. So to bring teachers um, from different districts, from charter schools, public schools, private schools, from elementary grades through high school, um, from the sciences to history to the geography teachers, the English language arts, bringing them together to build community around these 21st century needs for all of our students. Um, so you see some images there, a, a program, um, you know, in the upper left-hand corner, we've got a partnership with uh, a, a geography professor who is um, working with teachers aboard the USS Midway. Um, we've got in the next slide, teachers out, looks like they're just hanging out outside, but they're actually learning how to gather data using mobile technologies to create um, online maps using ArcGIS online. And um, in the bottom left-hand corner, our programs invite parents and community members in as well. And this program in Fullerton is a great example of how we brought the Korean community, parents coming together with teachers to share cultural information and to better communicate about the needs of not only their children in our public school system, but um, to, uh, so that those teachers could learn more about this culture to build cultural bridges across the different um, ethnic groups in their classrooms. And then the bottom right-hand corner um, represents our um, focus on, not really a focus, but our, our inclusion of pre-service teachers in the work that we do. We look at the, the development of teachers as leaders starting in that pre-service program, moving into their induction program, supporting them into in-service, and right up right up to veteran status. So um, that's an important component of the programs that, that we offer is that we, we're not just looking at a certain uh, demographic when it comes to the, the diverse teaching force that we have. And then finally, that teacher leadership that started with the site directors and engages the teachers in professional, professional learning opportunities, um, it then leads right into the to the school side or into the classroom. Um, so here are some examples of what we see in the schools that we um, where we have have helped teachers to develop their leadership. We have everything from teachers leading, bringing their students together around a, a global forum, um, and this is much like the Model United Nations, this California World History Project that brings together high school students um, from uh, across schools to discuss and debate and propose solutions to some of our greatest world issues. Um, but teacher leadership shows up in, in those kinds of student programs, but also in everyday lessons. Um, on the right side, you see a, a bilingual teacher in a third grade classroom. Uh, we were able to go and videotape her working with students and her students going outside to uh, gather data and do a species inventory of um, the area around their school. Um, so we were able to capture that and present that in a webcast to teachers in California as we looked at how uh, geography and global alert, global issues can be um, taught in alignment with the C3 framework. Um, and you can find that on the Los Angeles County Office of Education website if you're interested or email me, I'll send you the link. Um, and then, you know, the, the environment changes when we see teacher leadership. We see schools that have posters and, um, and flags and, and student-generated um, uh, artwork or displays. Um, here's an example of the United Nations Millennium Goals that a group of high school students um, at a high school, they, they learned about, they translated into um, these incredible posters that went up around their school and painted them all themselves. Um, and then finally, uh, in the classroom, uh, in the bottom right-hand corner, we see an example of recently we had a, an international student studying at uh, San Diego State University through one of our programs. He was matched up with this high school class of students in Sweetwater. And um, because he's studying water issues and water quality to in his program at San Diego State to take back to his home country of Uganda, um, he was working with students to explore different ways to um, transport water, to filter, in this case, filter um, water and 
um, address some of the, the issues of water quality and water access and water transport. Um, and these students were incredible as they were asking questions and proposing solutions and, and trying to figure things out, which is what so much of, um, of what we look to them when we shift the leadership to the students. Um, they are the ones who are going to be coming up with these incredible solutions for our future. Um, so, so that's what teacher leadership looks like, and we've got incredible examples of teacher leaders throughout the state of California as a result of the work that we do with the International Studies Project. Um, in the upper right-hand corner, this, you know, welcome to Mandy Bush. She's, she is the high school teacher at um, Norte Vista High School in Riverside, just named Teacher of the Year for her school site, her district, and is a finalist for um, Teacher of the Year for her county. And um, Mandy started with a global leadership club, which then turned in this year into a course that's being piloted. And they're doing some incredible things. Um, and so Mandy steps out of her classroom and shares her student work and her student experiences and student successes with teachers at our statewide conference um, at the National Council for Social Studies conference this year. Um, so Mandy's doing some really great things out in the Inland Empire. Um, moving to the right, we've got Barbara Doten, who pulled her, these ninth grade students from her large high school in Long Beach together to propose solutions for um, sustainability at their school site after doing months of resource and, and project-based learning in the community. Um, bottom left-hand corner, we've got a middle school teacher, Jenna Martin, who uh, started as a pre-service teacher and said, I need to learn more about this. This is relevant learning for my history social science students. Um, she's moved into a humanities position and is, um, and it, sorry, I'm looking at, at the chat here, um, and is, is working with teachers to, do, to bring them into this global dialogue program and show how interdisciplinary teaching can really make a difference with um, with the students in her community. And we, we don't want to ignore, you know, we recognize a need to, to build more, um, more programs in the elementary classroom. So one of our teacher leaders, Erica Marsh, in the bottom right-hand corner, um, going out and crowdfunding and crowdsourcing and, and getting her kids engaged in global uh, book bags and um, all kinds of just really great uh, programs. So I see we're running out of time here, and I'm trying to, to get to the, the um, chat as well, but um, so don't don't apologize. <laughs> um, I wanted to to finish up with some recommendations. Um, as we move forward, we are again addressing that professional learning continuum of teachers. We are investing in our pre-service educators um, as as well as those going through induction and those in the veteran status. Uh, we work very hard throughout the state to provide lots of on ramps to opportunities to develop as a leader. Teacher leaders are not, you know, we don't want to put a, a box around or a bow around what a teacher leader is. Some of them are, show their leadership through curriculum development or um, exploration of online useful technologies or getting up in front of a group and presenting um, or letting a film crew come into their classroom or by sharing student work. So we, we provide lots of opportunities for teachers to develop as leaders and to share. Um, we, re we recognize the need to make lots of time for reflection and for planning. Um, teacher leadership just doesn't happen um, without those important components. Um, we provide as much ongoing feedback and, and communicate with those teacher leaders to, again, sustain them in their work and in their growth. Um, and all the while, we're developing this culture of collaboration. Leadership is, is not for the, you know, for the few, it's for the many. Um, so we are working hard to be interdisciplinary and inclusive. Um, those of you looking for ideas to develop teacher leadership in your, where you are at your school site or through your projects, um, get into classrooms and help teachers to build those connections that they sometimes don't have the time to be able to do um, or the, the wherewithal and, and support in that way.
So where does this leave us? We have some next steps with our um, project, and we are going to, going to continue to develop our professional learning communities around primarily what global education is, where it's going, and then professional development itself, which is changing. It's evolving with the profession. Um, we are looking to and working with World Savvy and their Global Competence Certificate to bring forward our site uh, directors and teacher leaders from that throughout the state. So that we have a core of um, support and some common language and common understandings and common experiences there to take into our many programs. Uh, we recognize, especially after yesterday's summit, a um, focus on technology. And California uh, is coming, is finishing up a year of this global uh, education summit. And so we're looking forward to the report, the forthcoming report and its recommendations so that our organization can step forward and address those questions of, you know, can we have a framework in California? Can we have a set of standards? Um, how do we continue this network? Um, to, to really build up that leadership throughout the state and connect us. And with that, um, we are looking to bring our leaders together into a, re into a retreat to develop uh, a more um, sustainable leadership program. So um, with that, there's my email address. I know we're out of time, so I have to jump out of, the, out of this. I also wish there was more sensitivity to diversity. Um, I would love to continue that conversation, so please get in touch with me, and um, thank you for, for joining us.